Okay, so I'm here at South Scar Abbey and I'm about to take the tour. So I'm going to videotape it and then I'll show you the whole thing in completion. Three hours, if you, if, well, if you prefer. Well, that's how it goes, all right. <laughs> Depending. Do I pay now or? No, it's after? free today. Oh, it's free, free today? for Heritage Week. Okay, great. Yes, normally normally it's a, a small subscription by your towards Wexford Lions Club. Right. But Heritage Week starts today. Okay. So, uh, and everything is free, so, right. so we're free too. Okay. okay. So, that's your luck. Yeah. Okay, well, what, what we're going to do is uh, we start a little tour just around uh, outside the walls of the town. So if, if anybody else shows up, we'll, we'll pick them up on the way. Right. Where are you from, sir? Uh, New York. New York and uh, Galway. And Galway. <laughs> oh, well, that's pretty far apart. <laughs> we'll just check and see if this, these people here are involved or are they just passing by. Uh, I'll just check with them too. Yeah. yeah. Fine weather we're having, really. Oh, this is not the normal, and uh, the way it should always be. Uh, it's not the normal here. The benefits of global warming, I guess. Oh, you got a few from Lyon as well. Where? Lyon. Oh, Lyon. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you, sir, you're going to come with this? I'm from India. From India? Yeah. Right, so we have something from Norway, from India, yeah. 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 from France, and also from the United States. Oh, excuse me, are you here on the second Yes, I am. Yes, I can I will try. Certainly. He's given the tour in Irish, so, <laughs> yeah. so everybody just, <laughs> everybody just follow him. <laughs> right, so so off we go then. Follow me then. Everybody, you are very welcome to Wexford. My name is Peter. I'm a volunteer guide with Wexford Lions Club. Now, the reason for coming here is, is not to see this lamppost. Right? <laughs> it's not very interesting, right? But I will explain why we are here. And we will assume that you have very little knowledge of Irish history, right? Yeah. So just to explain very briefly, what we are going to talk about is about the period of history between 1169 and 1540, roughly speaking. Now, in 1169, there were four provinces in Ireland, and this province here was called Leinster. 
and there were four kings who didn't agree with each other very much and particularly the king of Leinster so he needed help from somebody else so he decided to go to the king of England Henry II now in 1169 the king of England was not only king of England but he was also king of excuse me almost half of France okay so he went to France and he asked for help and the king said yes uh, you can uh, you can have my my knights my barons to come from uh, Wales they originally had come from Normandy right and they would come to help so they arrived in May of 1169 uh, in the south of the county and about two weeks later they arrived here now what they found were two communities one was Viking and the other was Celtic the Celtic had been here for a very very long time the Viking only just a couple of hundred years and they lived beside each other quite happily this was the Celtic end the other end of the town was the Viking so they liked what they saw so they decided to build a castle and there is some high ground at the other end of the town and that's where they built the castle we know that it took about 25 years to build the castle because as this gentleman may know in France at the moment in a place called Guidelon they are building a castle a medieval castle with the materials that they used in the Middle Ages and they know it's going to be ready next year after 25 years now now they have a castle and they like the town so it's good for shipping and they think we will put a wall around this town so they started in 1250 to build a wall starting at the other end of the town so they're coming this way with the wall and in 50 years they arrive at this point here 1300 and this townhouse or keep was built for Sir Stephen Dedover he would have been a Norman baron now <clears throat> if you look at the wall you'll see that there is a, a tower just at the end of the grass and it, it's round yeah. right okay. now if you keep going further along the next tower is round but the tower after that is square mm -hmm. and all the other towers are square as well so you ask why, why? And the, the answer is <coughs> excuse me the 12 to 1300s were the years of the Crusades to the Holy Land and people went to the Holy Land and they saw things and one of the things they discovered was that if you were attacking a city and you wanted to put a ladder up against a wall it was much harder to do with a round tower so they said when we come back to Wexford and we keep building our wall all the new towers will be round so uh, everybody in Wexford knows about that anyway there where that block of apartments is now used to be at the time a monastery nothing remains we have only the word of the archaeologists and the historians to tell us that there was a monastery there <coughs> but the monks only lived there they didn't pray there they prayed here where that big tree is and that's what we're going to visit right now unfortunately for the monks due to bad planning or something somebody decided to build a wall between where they lived and where they prayed but in order to satisfy the monks they gave them a special door which we'll look at in a moment which was only for monks now there is also a legend that if you like you can believe or you can disbelieve if you stand where I am and you look up the river 
you will be able to see another little castle. Yes, you see? You see a little castle on the edge of the water? Yes. Right? Okay. That castle belonged to another Norman baron, and his name was De La Roche. And he had a son whose name was Alexander. And he fell in love with a girl who lived here in the town. But his family uh, were not happy because they were very wealthy people. But the girl came from a family where there was only a very small farm. So they decided to send Alexander to the Crusades in the hope that he would forget Catherine, his girlfriend. <laughs> now, when you went to the Crusades, you went for 10 years. And from the time of your birth until arriving in the Holy Land, all of your sins were forgiven. And if you stayed for 10 years and came back, all of your sins for life were forgiven. So it was a free pass into heaven. But you did have to stay the 10 years. Anyway, <coughs> two or three years passed and word came back to tell Catherine that unfortunately Alexander had been killed in battle. So she was very sad and she decided to enter a nunnery. Two years later, Alexander showed up. He wasn't dead at all. There'd been some mix up. And he arrived back and said, now we can get married. And she said, no, 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 I have taken a vow. I can't marry. So he said, okay, then I too must enter a monastery. And because his family were wealthy, they said, if that's what you want to do, we will pay for a monastery and you will be the first abbot. So that's the other version. You can believe whichever you prefer. So we go down now and have a look and see where the monks got in town. And that was the gate through which monks only, right? Uniquement des moines by this door. And uh, in those days, if you were in trouble with the law, uh, if you could possibly get into a monastery, you were safe. So this is the door that you came to to get sanctuary. On the other hand, if you were anybody else, you went through one of these entrances in the wall. Now, there were seven of these, but only one remains. And the reason for closing up the other six was because there was too much traffic. And all of the other gates went in some direction. They went to this town or that town or another town. This gate didn't go anywhere. So it was okay to preserve it. Now, there would have been big wooden gates. The ground would have been much lower down. And all this ground here would have been much lower down too. Because in some cases, if you look further, you'd say, the wall is very low. I could easily get over that with a ladder. But the ground was much, much further down. Would have they maintained a moat? Anybody? No, no, there was no, no moat, just a, a huge, big uh, sort of a valley okay. between the high and the wall. Yeah. <coughs> now, so here we are. Hello. Would you like to come in here? So, the reason for beginning the little tour outside was to give you an idea of what it would have been like to be outside the town, right? Whereas now we're going to see what it's like in the town. Now, in peaceful times, you would have come and people would have gone in and out here, 
ordinary townsfolk, with the exception of somebody who came to sell something. Now that could be vegetables, it could be any number of different things. And when they came through, they paid a tax through there, we think, to a form of customs. So this was the custom post just, just there somewhere, okay? Now, <clears throat> on if the town was under attack, they closed the gates, and if you managed to come in, and you were attacking the town, you'd have to watch out for these, of which there are two. Now, they're known as murder holes, and they would be open, and down would come very hot sand, boiling oil, uh, all sorts of things that would be very uncomfortable. Um, in medieval times, <coughs> excuse me, soldiers wore chain mail, and um, because of the proximity to the sea, they had access to a lot of sand. So they would light a fire upstairs, put the sand in the fire, and then pour it down here. And if you got hot sand in your in your chain mail, that was very painful. So, so that's the murder holes. Um, on my right here, these little places, these would have been like stocks and uh, people would have been chained here for doing minor infringements of the law for for fighting or drinking or causing trouble in town and one additional person who would be tied up here would be people who were traders selling things who thought by setting up their stalls not in the town but outside the town somewhere, that was a crime. Because that was known as forestalling. That's where the that's where the word comes from. Forestalling was setting up your, your, your stall ahead of the town stalls. And that person would be arrested and tied up here, and then you could throw rotten vegetables and so forth at these people. So now we're moving in. <laughs> so just <coughs> at this point I need to tell you two things what one is um, that uh, ten years ago uh, all of this was completely shut up and closed and not open or available to members of the public. And completely overgrown and quite considerably damaged by vandalism. Right. The, the town council decided to approach the Wexford Lions Club. Now, I hope that some of you are aware or would have heard, perhaps, of the Lions Club. Anyway, there's a very good Lions Club in Wexford and they were asked if they would like to take it on as a project and get it open to the public all right and the other thing i have to tell you is the ground is very uneven so please um be very careful where you walk because we don't have any facilities for broken legs or or anything else like that <laughs> so you need to follow me you're in a graveyard <coughs> yes this was an old graveyard <laughs> Okay, this is the. Okay, graveyard is. No. 
No. So the, uh, <coughs> just to explain, the reason for, for locking the gate is because on previous occasions we have found that we've locked people in by mistake. So at least um, if somebody else comes, we will hear them. I had a friend got locked into a museum on a submarine. Oh, well, there you <laughs> are. <laughs> yes, well, that's a warning <laughs> to you. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, this, this is the place 10 years ago. Uh, where they brought, the council brought members of the Lions Club to come and have a look. So we stood here, and if you stand where I'm standing and you look that way, and you see these graves with the railings, mm -hmm. right? Well now, you couldn't see any railings. They weren't visible. So that gives you an idea <laughs> of what it was like. Oh. You couldn't actually see any of those railings. Anyway, so it was a very big job, uh, which took many months. Uh, to tidy away all the, you know, the vegetation and all sorts of things that were here that shouldn't have been here. So having done that then, uh, we made a map. And the map, the map is here, as you can see.